The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Okay, so we got another uh, homework assignment here. Uh, this one dealing with acids and bases, and I thought we'd just go ahead and jump right in and work some of these problems, get you a little bit more confident on your numerical problem solving, and get at some of the underlying uh, concepts that drive this as well. So um, let's go ahead and get in, and if you have questions, uh, see me in class, or throw some down in the comments, or give me an email. So here we go. First one, pretty straightforward, right? The idea here is that we want to uh, be able to calculate pH and to do that is, is very simple. The math here is not tough, but you can get caught up if you're not careful with the, the formulas and again the underlying chemistry. So here we've got uh, nitric acid, right? And we remember that nitric acid, of course, is one of the six strong acids that we have to be able to identify. Uh, you'll be able to do, need to do that for the exam. And here you can either treat this as an Arrhenius acid. Um, I, I typically like to treat these as bronsted lauri acids and say that in this case you're going to get complete dissociation or rather complete transfer of that uh, proton to water. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that's 100% transfer. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, 0 0.00250 molar. And I'm going to go ahead and say H3O plus. It's a good thing to go ahead and start thinking about that. So then we say negative log. Right, formally pH is negative log of the H plus concentration, but that's equivalent to the hydronium. So we can say that's going to be equal to negative log of 0 0.002 Five zero and again use your units right it's no <laughs> units are there to help you they help you to give precision in your language and precision in your mathematics and, and can guide you through a problem so if you crank this one out I think I get something like 2.60 for my pH uh, something I noticed in grading these uh, some of you um, I'm sure you know you've learned the rules of logarithms and you can tell me what the characteristics are and the mantissa and all that kind of stuff but uh, what you wanted to be careful to look at here is the, the number of sig figs here uh, would be 3. And formally, the number of sig figs just due to log uh, rules would transfer into the mantissa, which are the numbers to the, the right of the decimal, and the characteristic is the, the number of values uh, to the, the left. And so in this case, you, you could get away with doing 3 sig figs here, but um, for pH, really, to be honest, whenever you go measure pH, whenever you're trying to think about pH calculations, we just oftentimes by convention cut it off at the hundreds place, and we can talk about why that is. And if you want to hold on to that third sig fig, if you want to do strict sig fig rules, that's perfectly fine. I usually just cut off to the tenth of uh, the hundreds place here uh, when you do your, your calculations. So uh, we can talk about that later in class if you're really worried about it. Okay, um, this next one, you really got to be careful, right? Some of you just go, go, go with the negative log stuff and you don't think about what the chemistry is. And so this is really important. This is going to be a uh, base. And, you know, this is something you might want to go ahead and, you know, write down if, if you're worried about forgetting or if you want to, uh, you know, think about what's actually going on here. And so this is a base, right? And so my pen's getting kind of... There we go, hung up. So base, right? So if we know this is a base, then the pH should be above 7, which is neutral, right? And so when you get a final answer, please just take the time to do a reality check, right? you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself, as Ice Cube would say, right? And so here you got to be careful. So uh, we're going to do negative log, but in this case, this is a strong base, right? And so we're going to get um, 0 0.00250 molar but remember this is not molarity of H3O plus or H plus this is molarity of the hydroxide concentration right and that's really important so make sure you're good with that so we're actually calculating POH here and if you remember you can uh, remember the really important um, relationship we had in class that pH plus POH right is equal to 14 and why is that well that relates back to the idea of KW right the auto uh, protonization or auto protonization of of water and, and that's something we can talk about later but you know we we covered that in class so that's a really really helpful uh, mnemonic there and so here we can say then that we go pH through simple arithmetic is equal to 14 minus POH and in this one I think I get something along the lines of 11.40 which indeed is above 7 so you're you're checking your answers as you go along making sure your numbers don't <laughs> Uh, get you off the path of reality because again that's a base that's a strong base and so you should be well above seven for your pH okay this one uh, you know again right here boom we got another strong base 
So I have no problems with just saying, hey, uh, you got to remember, uh, you know, when you're done, this better be uh, pH over 7.0, and that's important. The other thing that got a lot of you was you got to think about stoichiometry. This is a strong base, strontium hydroxide. It's going to dissociate to give you one uh, unit of strontium plus two plus, right? Because if you really wanted to, you could write this as strontium two plus. Each of these hydroxides is uh, an anion, so you got to have two of them to balance, make that whole thing neutral. So if you think about that, when that dissolves in water, it's not going to give you a one-to-one -one like so many of you are used to when we deal with uh, acids and bases. It's going to give you a one-to-two, and so in this case, it's going to be 0 0.0300 molar hydroxide. And that's really critical because if you get that wrong, that's a big difference in concentration, factor of two, right? And that's going to really drive your, your calculations way off. So again, in this case, since we have the hydroxide concentration, we'll calculate pOH. So 14 minus the pOH is going to give you the pH. In this case, I think my calculator spits out something like 12.48. Definitely above 7, so there you go. You're good there. And then we can finish with an easy one. I mean, the nitric acid here and the uh, hydrochloric acid are, are very similar problems. They're both monoprotic strong acids, right? So that's going to give you complete dissociation if you talk about Arrhenius, or it's going to give you complete uh, proton transfer if you're talking about bronsted lari context. So here we can just then say negative log, right, uh, of the hydronium concentration. So we're going to get, um, what is that, 0 0.0154 or 50 molar. And I'm going to go ahead and just write that in there so I don't forget what molarity am I talking about for what species because that's going to be really important later on and for this one I think the mathematics are absurdly simple and you get uh, what 1.82 and again that's an acid right so pH better be below 7 so there you go I think that's that's pretty straightforward those are some really gimme problems that are good kind of warm-ups for dealing with the idea of pH alright so the one we have down here though is a little bit different um, here you realize that hopefully this is acetic acid, right? Um, uh, acetic acid, you know, you've dealt with vinegar probably in your house cleaning and things like that. And here it's a weak acid because you know it's not one of the strong six that I've asked you to be able to identify. Plus the big hint here is you're given a Ka value. And that Ka, 10 negative fifth, you know, it's not the strongest thing in the world, but it's worth figuring out here. So let's think about the bronsted lari chemistry that's going to drive our ice uh, setup, right? I want you to you know, trust the ice method, it's really important. You can go uh, link to the uh, uh, old school vanilla ice video if that makes you happy, but uh, let's just go ahead and jump into this. So we've got our acetic acid, and I'll give you a hint here. Uh, if you're in the middle of an exam and you want to save a little bit of time, a little bit of trouble, any weak acid that's monoprotic, you can just treat as H. A. And A is just a placeholder. A means any anion. So this A would be acetate, this acetate unit here. Some of you like to call choo-choo or whatever. And so there you go. Uh, saves you a little time. So that's that's going to be aqueous. And I, I usually go ahead and write aqueous just so I don't get confused. Uh, and then we're going to throw that in, uh, of course, to water. And important here, water is a pure liquid. Please, 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 for Oh goodness, for my my blood pressure purposes, make sure that you realize that this whole unit is dealing with equilibrium. So here we are dealing with a reversible reaction. So many of you are still, you know, coming off of that 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 maybe Chem 111 uh, hangover of of one-way arrows, and that's not what we do here. We were talking about equilibrium, so it's reversible, and you need to in indicate that. And some of you will be mad, and you'll say, "Oh, it's it's details," but these details really demonstrate your mastery of the understanding of the chemistry behind it. So please uh, show me what you know. So here, then, we'll say we get um, a minus, which would be the acetate, right? So if you want to write acetate down, you can do that. And then finally, we get our our hydronium, right? And the hydronium shows us that we had a uh, bronsted lowry proton transfer from uh, the, the acidic proton on acetic acid going to the water to give us the leftover acetate anion and hydronium, right? And make sure we have our charges all balanced, our atoms all balanced, we're good. And so here we're going to start with our initial molar concentration. I put little brackets there to be molar. Uh, concentration and so here we say um, first thing I do let's say I go ahead and write down this whole ice table and have a um, 
equilibrium concentration and to get there we have our change right and that's where we get the ice idea from initial to equilibrium through this change and that's really important initially what did we have when we first started right we're going to say we had 0 0.0250 molar water we don't know we don't care we're not going to really worry about the water because it's not in the equilibrium expression and effectively it doesn't change over here we did not initially put in any acetate and we did not artificially uh, load in any acid to begin with so those are both zeros well if that's the case we know we have to get some product right we have to have some shift if you want to calculate Q go ahead and calculate that big O zero but to save time you can realize that I don't have any of these products so I've got to at least have some won't be a large number but I gotta have some to reach equilibrium so that means this guy's got to decrease and these have to increase in concentration right and that's really important you gotta uh, keep a track keep track of all that good stuff and then finally equ at equilibrium it's just whatever you have as the, the initial modified by the change and so we can go 0 0.250 minus X over here it's gonna be X and over here is gonna be X very very simple but you gotta have that for full credit okay if I'm gonna go ahead and numerically solve for X I say okay well I can write my Ka expression, which is just a, another expression of equilibrium for the acid. And so we'll say, okay, well, I have a molar concentration of the anion, molar concentration of hydronium, right? That's important, all over the molar concentration at equilibrium. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put these little EQs down here so that people don't forget. And it helps me out so much. Remember, you only calculate K if and only if your concentrations, in this case molar concentrations, are at equilibrium. That's really critical. Any other place you're actually calculating Q, not equilibrium. And we can throw that in. We can say, okay, we've got X, X, and I'm just reading from my ice table, right? 0 0.0250 minus X. All right. Now, here we can use a little bit of a trick. Some of you obviously know this is going to be a quadratic, and if you love solving quadratics, you can start a campus club and um, you know do all that kind of fun stuff for uh, you know solving quadratics. You know, have fun with that. Um, in this case, on an exam, you might want to uh, save that time and save your joy for the quadratic equation for after class. And let's just go ahead and make an approximation. We're going to say that this k value up here, 10 and negative fifth, is small. So I'm not going to get much shift to the right. I'm not going to get much uh, product formation. These x's should be pretty small. And if that's the case, then I can say, well, compared to my starting concentration, x is really small. So I'm going to say that's not going to impact that value very much. It's not going to be significant. So I'm going to have to assume in this case, to save a little bit of time, that compared to 0 .0250, uh, x is going to be negligible, right? And so there we go. And then x compared to itself is, is significant, so you have to keep those x's on the top. That will save us a little bit of time, and you plug in the number uh, that was given above, 10 negative fifth. Now, if you solve that, it makes things so much quicker than solving a quadratic. And so I think I get for this one, um, what did I get? I got um, x, and here's the little trick I do. I always worry that some of you guys get so abstracted in terms of what X is as a variable that you forget what it actually is. And so I typically say, okay, well that relates back to some chemistry. So in this case, X is equal to the concentration of the anion, which is more importantly equal to the concentration of hydronium in this case, which numerically, I, when I solve it, I think I get something like 6.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. In that case, if I want to solve for pH, pH equals negative log of the concentration um, formally of H+, plus, but we know hydronium is related to that, and if I cr calculate that guy out, I get something on the order of 3.17, which is acidic, and that makes sense. It's a weak acid. It should be acidic. It shouldn't be, you know, uh, as acidic as maybe your strong acids, but pretty, pretty simple calculation there. So I hope that gives a good example of when you can make the assumption. And if it, you know, if you look at this, right, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fourth compared to our starting concentration is pretty in insignificant. So we're okay there. Remember, you can prove it to yourself. You can say, does this survive 
5% approximation. If this number is less than 5% of your starting concentration, you're in good shape. And in this case, you can prove it to yourself mathematically that we're okay in making that assumption. If we weren't, we'd have to go and solve the quadratic, and there would be much rejoicing from some of you. All right. This one's a little trickier, and I like this problem because it really helps uh, figure out if you understand what's going on with acids and bases and how to think about K values and pKa values and, and using the ice. And so I would, I would jump in right away, and I would say, I'm going to think about, number one, the chemistry and the ice here. So please don't forget uh, to think about ice and to think about the chemistry. Really important. And then if and only if you understand those can you move on to the math. I worry that some of you uh, want to jump to the math and start cranking out numbers and solving for x, but that's going to lead you down the wrong path if you don't think about the other two first. Okay, so what do I got? I've got some acid, HA. I don't know what it is, but I know it's an acid, right? Monoprotic, really important. I'm going to say I've got HA. I know that's going to be soluble. It's going to react in a bronsted lari fashion with water, right? There we go. It's a weak acid, so we're going to do this, and we're going to... Um, find out that we get the um, anion formed after the proton transfer, and we're going to get H3O+, plus, right? The strongest acid in water that we can have. There we go. So we need to find K. Well, I don't, I don't know K. I, I don't have very much, but, ooh, wait a minute. I got pH here. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So let's go ahead and set up the ice table. We've got the chemistry down now, so that's good. we got the chemistry. Let's go ahead and jump into ice now. We can say, okay, well, we've got our initial molar concentrations, and I'm going to say initially I've got, well, it's given to us 0 0.0100 molar. Again, with water, we don't really worry about that. We did not put in any of these two initially, so that means that for our change, right, we're going to have to form at least a little bit of product. So minus x, again, don't care about water, plus x, plus x, there we go. Remember, we have to go at least a little bit in the forward direction to establish a K. That's really important. And then finally, the equilibrium concentrations, well, that's just the result of the initial and whatever factor of change we experience. In this case, 0 0.0100 minus x. Don't worry about water. There was none to begin with. We went up by x, so now we've got x and the same over here, right? Really important. Okay, now, Initially, you might say, well, let's just go ahead and solve a uh, quadratic or let's solve some reaction. Oh, wait a minute, we can't because we don't have K. Well, let's think about that. Can't, do we have any other information here that will help us solve for the value of X? And remember, X is equal to the concentration right, of the hydronium, and I think this is so important, at equilibrium. Re remember, it relates up here to the chemistry. Always think about the chemistry, really important. Well, if we want to figure this out, the value at equilibrium, well, isn't that what determines the pH in all of our other problems? Yeah. So if the pH is equal to 3.12, right, that's just simply the antilog, right? You can solve for that. And if you solve for that, the concentration, right, is given to us as, I think I get something like 7.6 times 10, oh, what did I get, 10 to the, the fourth, I think, some negative fourth, sorry. There we go. Now look at that. We've, we've calculated x. We've got everything we need now for the equilibrium concentrations. That's really important. So if we know that, we can go through and say Ka, right, is simply equal to the expression that we've used before, right? The products over the reactants, right? In this case, the undissociated acid. And again, I'm going to say these are the equilibrium concentrations. You can now just crank this out, right? You don't even need any approximations here because you're not solving for x. Oops, little mistake there. Um, you've actually figured x out. So if you do that, you can say 7.6 times 10 to the negative fourth, right, squared 0 0.0100 minus 7.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And again, this value is pretty small compared to that. But let's go ahead, since we know it, we can throw it in. 
and I think I get something like 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. That equals Ka. And you want to find pKa? We can do that. P, remember P, you can P anything, that's negative log. And so I get something like 4.20. There you go, very, very simple. Again, the ice setup I think is so easy in terms of the ice and the chemistry working together to help you understand what's going on. Numerically it's very simple, but here is a different way of finding x. Before we found x using you know, quadratics or um, approximations based on a known k value, which is the more common. But if you actually go in lab, this is how you determine a Ka if you discover a new, new acid. That's really exciting. You can measure the pH. If you know the initial concentration, boom, you got it. And that's really exciting. Okay, that's the first page. Second page, a um, little bit more qualitative to start off with. And so here we can say we've got, uh, we've got this guy here, and it looks like you've got some ionizable or some some protons or ages that you can transfer away as protons. This is you know, dihydrogen phosphate. Ammonia, you should all know by now, is a base. So we can say that this is an acid. This is a base. You could actually look over here at the conjugates, right? If, if you see that the ammonia is, is, is accepting a proton, so that means it would be the, the base. And on this side, if it goes back, it has to go back to ammonia, right? So this would be their conjugate acid, leaving this to be the conjugate base. If you want to think about the hydrogen phosphate then has to gain a proton to become uh, dihydrogen phosphate so this is your conjugate base very very simple now you have when you're solving you know you have many resources at your disposal when you're solving homework problems you have the internet you've got your OpenStax um, free online textbook you've got your tro book if you bought a copy of that so you can look up the ka's right and it's pretty simple if you compare ka's or kb's the reaction shifts in this direction and you know, I didn't, I didn't want you to actually give me a number, so you can actually put a guess here, but um, you know, just justify it in some way. All right, this one's really simple. We talked about the, the chemical properties of, of acids and bases, and so here it says we've got perchloric acid, which is, uh, hopefully you remember, right, is a strong acid, right, and it's maybe worth noting that's a strong acid, and then here it says that. Um, this periodose acid is actually weak, right? Weak acid. But again, they're still monoprotic acids, right? Really important. So give two factors why this one over on the right is so much weaker than the strong acid on the left. And so the first one is very simple. If you just look here, you've got uh, these are uh, oxo acids, right? And the, the one on the, the, the left over here, you know, you've got four times oxygen versus one times oxygen. And so if you realize that increased number of oxygens, right, tell us that what you do is you essentially uh, polarize, you know, that, that proton, that hydrogen that we're uh, dealing with is actually connected to an oxygen. And if you pull the electron density away from that hydrogen, you make it more proton-like, it's easier to remove, and therefore you're a stronger acid. So the more oxygens you have in this part of the molecule help to pull electron density over here and make that bond more polarizable, uh, easier to deprotonate, more proton-like, easier to separate, uh, so that helps you become a stronger acid, as we discussed in class. The second one, higher electronegativities of the central atom uh, increase acid strength, right? And that's really important. So if you look here, you say that the chlorine is much more electronegative than iodine. And again, the same answer over here, that if you have a, a chlorine in this bundle of stuff on this side, it's going to help pull the electron density away from the hydrogen, making it more proton-like, easier to dissociate. Very, very simple. This next problem gave a number of you uh, great difficulties. And again, I said, you know, it's okay. This, this structural analysis, especially when it comes to amines and inductive effects and things like that, you're going to get more into with organic. But I thought it's worth thinking about because the way I look at this, I say H2N. Well, if I draw it like this, doesn't that look a lot like ammonia? I mean, here you've got three hydrogens on ammonia with the lone pair, right? You've got two hydrogens on ammonia here, but instead of being pure ammonia, right, where this would be an H, you've got this ethyl group. And that's okay. We can draw that if you want to. We can say we've got hydrogen over here, right? We've got a hydrogen over here. And what we can do just to save time is we can say this is just some R group. In this case, R equals 
C to H5. No big deal. You don't have to really worry about what that structure means, but this is a derivative of ammonia. And you probably know by now, uh, hopefully, that ammonia is a base. It's one of the most common, uh, commonly encountered weak bases. And so we can draw some bronsted lari uh, chemistry here, right? We can say it's weak, so we're going to get equilibrium here. And so now we can say, well, if this is going to act like ammonia, it's going to accept a proton from water, so we're going to get OH minus, right? There you go. I try to draw that minus on the oxygen. You think about your formal charges from back in the days in 111. And then we can say, OK, well, now we have three H's and C2H5. Still got that little lone pair. And this is just like ammonium, right? This looks a lot like NH4 if you think about it. But the key take home here is that you formed hydroxide, which is going to dominate the pH acid base chemistry. And so this is going to be a base. There you go. This one down here, you should know this by now. This is essentially if we get rid of the counter ion, right, and we say this is going to be a um, anion by itself, right? We only look at the the one that's going to do chemistry. It's a salt, right? So we learned by now that you take salts and acetates are soluble. Um, you know, you guys, we don't care what sodium is going to do. It doesn't really have any appreciable acid base chemistry, and we talked a lot about that in class. However, acetate does. And so we can sit there and say, okay, well, we've got acetate. And again, read the directions, right? We only, we don't want to deal with the guys that sit the bench, right? So uh, the spectator ions, we do not include them. They're not going to be important. We only want to focus on the folks that are doing the job here. And so um, acetate is a weak base. And you might remember acetate's the conjugate base of what weak acid that we just talked about earlier? Yeah, that's right, it's acetic acid. And so there you go. And that's going to give you some aqueous acetic acid plus some OH minus, right? And there we go. And so we see the bronsted lari chemistry here. You've got the uh, base here, water in this case acting as your acid to give you the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. And of everything involved here, the conjugate base um, hydroxide is going to dictate the chemistry that's involved with acid base analysis and so if you have this strong base floating around that's going to be the the winner here and you're going to get um, a basic solution so in the first case this amine is a, a a base and then this is a salt right we should have mentioned that before i think i did when i talked about this but it's a soluble salt and it's a basic one at that all right this last one gave a lot of you a lot of trouble and that's because, again, it wasn't that the math that was, that was too hard, although some of you did struggle in this case. I knew you were itching to do a quadratic, and um, when I gave you the chance, some of you had a hard time. So go back and make sure you can do that. Um, so let's jump right in. So sulfuric acid is a tricky one. Many of you identified that, number one, sulfuric acid is a strong acid. However, it is a diprotic, and only the first, I repeat, only the first dissociation or deprotonation is large. That means it's strong only in the first step. The second step is very weak. Well, it's not that weak, but it's weaker than the first one. And so let's go ahead and just draw this chemistry out. H2, SO4, right? And that's going to be aqueous, right? And this is where, you know, if you want to, you can, you can draw it as a, you know, uh, Bronsted-Lari. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and say, do an Arrhenius example for a change. We've got our naked proton, which of course will become hydrated to form a hyd hydronium, right? But the key here I want to show you is that you actually have to do these step by step. And it's really, really important to do it this way. So if this guy starts out as 0 0.0100 molar, it's going to go complete, right? For approximately complete dissociation. So you're going to get point. 0, 1, 0, 0 molar hydronium or proton. You know, in fact, if you want to, you can say that actually is going to go to hydronium. And then for hydrogen sulfate, there you go. So that's really important. So what you can do then is you can say, okay, if I'm thinking about molar concentration of hydronium at equilibrium, I know I've got at least, right, at least. 0.01 molar in the bank from only the first step. And that's really important. So what I want to do now is think about, the, you know, we've done with the first step. Boom. Let's think about the second step. The second step, and some of you didn't do this, and it just, you know, just you know, hurts my heart a little bit um, when you, you don't think about the chemistry. You've got some 
um, hydrogen sulfate here and that's gonna let's think about the bronsted lowry chemistry this time right and so this is a weak acid why do we know it's a weak acid because ka2 has a value right it's a it's a pretty strong weak acid but it's still weak acid it's not complete dissociation right if it makes you feel better you can draw the top arrow in this direction a little bit larger than the arrow below and you can say okay well what are we going to get here we're going to get sulfate right which is the uh, 2 minus counter anion right this is the conjugate base and then we're going to get some good old hydronium and then this is where people really forgot what was going on here's where we set up the ice right we have our initial concentration our change and our equilibrium concentration really important so a lot of you got this part. You realize that, okay, when that first one dissociated, now we have 0 0.0100 molar. We don't worry about water. We don't have any sulfate to begin with, but man, you guys, you got to watch out. We have some hydronium to start with, 0 0.0100, right? And that's really important. So many of you did not think about this and that's killed your your math and your answer so you gotta think about the chemistry here all right well the change then we have a little bit of hydronium a little bit of hydrogen sulfate but we've got absolutely no sulfate that means we still have to move to the right a little bit to at least establish that equilibrium so this is gonna decrease this is gonna increase this is gonna increase and then here's what we get then 0 0.0100 0, 0, minus x x and 0 0.100 plus x. Okay, so now you can calculate what this value is going to be, and we could say, okay, hold on, we've got a k value, ka2 in this case, and that's 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2, and that's going to equal, um, again, I, I write it in. I know you may think I'm being um, silly by doing this but it will save you some trouble and heartache later on on exams because not only will you get more partial credit but you will hopefully avoid making avoidable mistakes right so there are equilibrium concentrations and you can then jump to saying that we've got X and 0 0.0100 plus X all over 0 0.0 uh, one zero zero I believe that's minus X if we transferred everything down your first instinct may be to use the good old approximation trick and we'll say that that's going to give us X um, 0 0.0100 and then 0 0.0100 and oh look at that they would cancel and that equals X um, which equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. The problem with that is what? This number is actually larger than your initial concentration. So this can't be a real thing. That means the approximation is not valid. So you say no approx allowed. Not gonna happen. So this is where you get to solve your quadratic. And uh, I'll, I won't work out the math here because it's rather trivial. If you need help, come see me. I think we can uh, deal with this, but it's basically x squared. If you factor all of this through, x squared plus, uh, what did I get? I got 0.022x uh, minus 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth equals zero. And if you solve that whole thing, uh, you get a negative. So remember, x is gonna have two solutions you'll get one that's negative and negative molarity will not apply to this version of reality not even on the weekend so let's let's ignore that one the positive root I think I get 0 0.00452 molarity and so if I remember I need to go back here and think about what the equilibrium concentration is or if you want to think about it this is step two so you can then go back up here to our previous discussion where we said what was already in the bank that much and we're going to add 0 0.00452 molar so that combination will give us the equilibrium concentration of H3O plus so if we want to do uh, negative log of the hydronium right we can do that if you add that number what did I get I got about 
Um, oh, first of all, let's go ahead and calculate the concentration here. I think I get 0, 0.0. Somewhere around 1, 4, 5 ish, right? If you, if I go back up here and do the math, right? If I just add that together, I get 0 0.0145 molarity. And then if you do that, I think I get something on the order of 1.84, which is interesting, right? Because if you had just assumed that all of the uh, hydronium came from the first step, you would probably think that your pH should be about 2, right? And that's 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 okay. I mean, that's a good estimate. In fact, if you if you want to just use that as a guide, you say, I know the pH is going to be around two if I ignore the second step. But you know, I would say from two to one point eight four. Remember, log is a, I mean, a pH is a log based scale, so every unit is a factor of ten. So if you go from two to one point eight four, um, that's actually a, a pretty rough approximation. You really do need to go in and, and figure it out. So. I think we're going to call it a day right there. If you have questions, definitely let me know. See me in class. Uh, come by the office. We'll chat about it. But um, I hope this gets you a little bit more comfortable with both strong acid, strong bases, and um, a good example of mono and diprotic uh, weak acid base chemistry. So good stuff. We'll crank up the problem solving next time. And um, have a good weekend.